Who's in Jason Mosi Jibrax and this is How do dead things become alive by the channel Kurs Gazette in a nutshell Yes, new Kurs Gazette video This is about how dead things become alive I have no idea I didn't even look at the thumbnail I, I just, you know, click on notification So I barely looked at the thumbnail But I know what this is gonna be But obviously it's gonna be fun So let's watch it Remember, if you like my channel, don't forget to subscribe So I know which type of videos to react to more I love scientific, any scientific video Cause Gazette is a great channel for that So I've done quite a few reactions on Cause Gazette videos If you haven't seen them, check out the link in the description And yeah, let's watch it You are cells Your muscles, organs, skin and hair they are in your blood and in your bones. Cells are biological robots. They don't want anything. They don't feel anything. They are never sad or happy. They just are, right here, right now. They're as conscious as a stone or a chair or a neutron star. Cells just follow their programming that's been evolving and changing for billions of years, molded by natural selection. They are impossible machines, and yet, here they are driven entirely by the fundamental forces of the universe. The smallest unit of life right at the border where physics becomes biology. Sometimes, to get a truer understanding of how amazing something is, you need to hold your breath and dive in really deep. So, what are cells and how do they work? Oh, cells. So I guess we're gonna learn how cells comes to be, proteins and things like that. It's gonna be fun. If you enjoy Look around the room you're sitting in right now. Let's fill it top to bottom with trillions of grains of sand, billions of grains of rice, hundreds of thousands of grapes, a few thousand apples, and a dozen watermelons. This is what the inside of your cells looks like. In terms of numbers, they're mostly filled up with water molecules, the grains of sand. Water gives the cells insides the consistency of soft jelly and enables other things to move around easily. Mm, fluid. Almost all the other things, the rice and fruit, are proteins. Several billion in total, more than 10,000 different kinds, depending on the function of the cell. Your cells are basically protein robots, as is all life, really. In fact, all solid, non-fat parts of your body are mostly made out of protein, even your bones. Proteins are dead things that make life happen. How does this work? The language of life. Cells need to do many very hard things to stay alive. Get food in and waste out, grow and build structures, escape danger or react to stimuli, make copies of themselves, and so on. All of this... Yeah, when people, obviously pe when people start to, I mean, it's, it's become a big now, working out, right? People, everybody, fitness is kind of a big thing nowadays, uh, compared to what, like eight years ago or something. So, <laughs> people are like, oh, you need protein. Hmm, I guess protein is same as carbohydrates. You just need protein. And people are like, hmm, protein is just something. They have no idea how important and complex protein can be. How, apart from your fat cells, like I said, everything is protein, including your bones, right? Viruses and everything <laughs> made out of amino acid. You know about that? Hmm, BCA, EAA, right? Amino acids. Hmm, are they important? Yeah, it's, they're fucking important. Is done by speaking the language of life. And the words of this language are proteins. This is how this language works in a nutshell. It all begins with amino acids, tiny go. organic molecules. They're the alphabet of the language of life. There are 21 different ones, like different letters. Amino acid A... Am there you go. <laughs> Anybody who works out knows this, right? Allerginine, right? <laughs> Lysine, aspartic acid, yes. Glutamine, what are the... Uh, L-leucine, isoleucine, valine. <laughs> if you work out and you have any kind of supplement, they're just listed there. There you go. Amino acid B, C, and so on. If you put around 50 amino acids together, they form a protein, which in the language of life is a word. And if you put many of these protein words together, you get a sentence called a biological pathway. Let's oversimplify a bit and say, for example, Look at the music, your cell man. needs to break down sugar with the language of life. It may take the amino acids for the letters B, R, E, A, and K to form the protein word break. Then, combine this word with other protein words to form a biological pathway sentence that means break down sugar. In reality, this language of life is so complex 
that it defies imagination. You need to know about 8,000 words to speak a human language really well. But in the language of life, there are an estimated 20,000. And Ooh, look at that shit. It's just, yeah, I mean, obviously, when it's a language word, this is like combinations. But yeah, this is more simplistic. I mean, I remember somebody telling me in the comments, like how during COVID times, people used to play Kazgazad uh, videos in hospitals and things. And this just makes me think, all every small animation in there, every small design, even the word break, how it was just there shining and every animation choice that they make is so good. Like they should use this as educational thing in schools and anywhere playing on TVs and shit. Every Kazgazad video is like that. I mean, I don't know. How do they get this so perfect, right? I mean, you can easily overdo this and make it something that's not appealing, but it's just like too much, right? Making it more shiny. You could do even worse and make it even... But this is just perfect. God knows how much time they put in just to like which animation, and which color is just perfect. While the average English word has five letters, human proteins have an average of 375 amino acids. The longest protein has more than 30,000 and cells need to execute thousands of steps at any moment. If they ever stop speaking the language of life, they die. Okay, but how do mindless cells speak a language this complex? Let's dive a little deeper. There are 21 amino acids that can be combined to form proteins. And proteins are made up of dozens to hundreds to thousands of amino acids. Mm. For the average protein length of a human cell of 375 amino acids, you get a stunning 6.8 times 10 to the power of 400. 10 to the power of 495. 10 to the power of 100 is like Google, right? And then power 200 is Google Plex. But this is like Google, Google, Google. Holy shit, how big it is. It's, it's something that you can't even comprehend. That you can't even visualize. 95 possible proteins your cells can make. A quadrillion Google, 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 Google times more than there are atoms in the universe. Oh! Most of these possible proteins are useless. Just like with human language, most random letter combinations are just gibberish. So you need to know which words, which proteins make up that many times more than there are atoms in the universe. God damn. How complex our bodies, man. All those combinations, right? And we sit here and we are like, okay, we'll figure out everything about the body one day. I think it's going to take time. <laughs> just knowing how complex this shit is. Right? Oh, we can figure out lots of diseases. We can figure out, you know, how can, you know, obviously we're making strides, but we are nowhere close to figuring out anything about cancer and things like that. I mean, yeah, it's way too big. It's way too complex. Language to speak it properly. And this is the job of your DNA, a long sequence of instructions. If you untangled a cell's DNA, it would be about two meters long. All of your body's DNA combined into one long string would reach to the sun and back over Damn. 20 times. Around 1% of your DNA is made up of genes, which are basically protein dictionaries that contain all the words Guides. of the language of life your cells speak. But genes are also the building manuals for all the proteins your cells need to function. The rest of your DNA is probably not useless, but basically like a set of rules. It's like the book of grammar of the language of life. Which proteins need to be built at which time? How Basically, many? this is where it comes from. Anyway, somebody, he just have the genes for it, right? When you see somebody like Brock Lesnar, how big his back is, right? He has bowling balls under his arm or whatever the saying was. He just has the genes. This is where it comes from. His DNA basically has the just right guidelines for those kind of, a, you know, protein combinations that it gives him this kind of physical appearance. It's a slight difference, not that, but yeah, th that matters, I guess. Any of them do you need? Which protein words go together and why? Okay, letters, words, sentences, dictionary, and grammar. Yep. But of course, this is all just a metaphor for something mind-numbingly complex. Let's dive a little deeper to catch a glimpse of reality. See, not just mind-numbingly, it's just like, it's a roadblock, right? Every scientist have this kind of a philosophical view, like, Will, will we ever come across a point where we are just not smart enough, even collectively, we humans are not just smart enough to figure something out. In, you know, quantum world is where we are at right now and this is where what people are thinking. Same in the other side is probably this, right? Uh, in biology, people are also like, uh, all these DNA sequences, we don't understand everything about this, how these proteins, how many combinations are there, how they all exactly work. 
this is where people come and say like when we develop a good enough fast ai maybe they'll figure something out so we'll create something that will in turn figure us out maybe how dead proteins make life now that we have some basic principles, we have a chance to understand how dead things make life together. And for that, we need a fundamental force of the universe, electromagnetism. Mm. The elementary particles that make up atoms, which make up amino acids, have different charges that attract or repel each other. The 21 different amino acids all have slightly different charges. Some are more negative, others more positive. When your cells build proteins, they put different amino acids together in chains, basically long strings. Now, because of the different charges of the amino acids used, these strings begin to fold in on themselves. This folding process is so complex that we still haven't completely understood how exactly it works. By the way, this is the fundamental of this is how everything in our body works to the fundamentals, right? And this is what makes me think like lots of people just say like, what if we go to, a, a, you know, another dimension? And the laws of physics are different. Let's say they don't have electromagnetism. What would happen to our body? Because none of this shit would work, right? None of this would work. What would happen? Would we just implode, explode? What would happen? But in a nutshell, 1D strings become 3D structures. Proteins are basically 3D puzzle pieces with a very specific shape. In the world of proteins, shape is everything. Because its 3D shape determines which areas of a protein are charged in which way, and this determines how it can interact with other proteins. All of these differently charged puzzle pieces can snap together or repel each other. When they snap together, their charge changes, which can make them change their shape, which then makes them a new protein, a new tool that can do new things. This is what makes proteins so incredibly powerful. You can do basically everything with them. They can snap together like Lego pieces to build complex structures. They can dismantle things. They can form complex micro-machines that use energy to do work. And maybe most stunningly, they can convey information. Let's say there's a toxic chemical entering your cell. There may be a protein shaped to snap to that toxin. If the protein go. finds that toxin, it changes its shape. With that new shape, it can now snap into a different protein that changes its shape again. This new protein activates a micro-machine that directly binds to your DNA to order the production of a special protein which acts as an antidote to the toxin. Yeah, this he went through this, uh, one of those our immune system videos. He made many of them, but that one surprised me how good it was, right? I don't think anyone can explain immune system that simplistic the way he did. This cascade of interaction is the pathway we spoke about earlier, a sentence in the language of life. So, without a single active thought, proteins have fixed a problem and saved the cell's life. In reality, these pathways can have dozens to hundreds of steps. How life operates is so incredibly awe-inducing. Somehow, mind-numbingly complex interactions between dumb and dead proteins create a less dumb and less dead cell. Somewhere around here, life happens. But we still don't know what life is. Seriously how dumb things are smart together. We need another analogy, so let's talk about ants. Right, ants share and a societies. fundamental property with cells, they are really dumb. A single ant will just stumble around uselessly. But if you put a lot of ants together, they exchange information and do amazing things. Constructing complex structures, organizing themselves, caring for broods, or attacking enemies. Although dumb individually, together they become something greater. This phenomenon occurs all over nature and is called emergence. Mm. It's the observation that entities have properties and abilities that their parts do not have. This is how everything in your body works. Your cells are bags of proteins guided by chemistry. But together, these proteins form a living being that can do a lot of really sophisticated things. Cells are mindless robots that are even dumber than ants but many of them acting together form specialized tissue and organ systems from muscles that make your heart beat to brain cells that make you think. Yeah, people use this kind of techniques to, I guess, reverse engineer something, right? Emergence, like some kind of property emergence because of collective of something, right? They try to figure that out just to reverse figure it out to the fundamental things of it. Lots of field studies are happening that way, right? 
uh, people are trying to understand something from all angles as well like why is this study taking so longer with so many people because they're all tackling that from different angles if you look outside at the incredible dimension and scale of space a place where forever is a real thing it's almost impossible not to feel a bit small not special but if you look inside into what you really are you just discover almost indescribable complexity the beautiful language of life yep there you go almost everything in the universe reveals hidden layers of complexity if you look closer and if you have the knowledge to understand it to help you with that we've created a series of lessons to take your scientific knowledge to the next level made in what is this advertisement i've never seen something like that before somebody you know complained him like this is an advertisement why are you not tagging it or something I mean, yeah, it's a sponsor, Brilliant.org. Yeah, we will go to Brilliant.org for this nutshell and support this channel. This channel is really good. Uh, somebody told me in the comments that there was some kind of a conflicting video, like somebody posted about Kazuzar or something. Uh, I don't think I've watched it. I don't, I don't know if I'm going to watch this, right? You'll always have certain people come. I mean, look, I'm kind of guy who takes information from all sides, right? But I do realize the latest trend of, you know, today's culture the people taking a small info here, taking small truth from that and exploding and making something where it's not, and oh, there you go, you know, the uh, new controversy, he's wrong, he's wrong. People are so quick to, you know, I guess, uh, show everybody as phonies. So they can just like, yeah, scientists are wrong, everybody's wrong, even this is wrong, that is wrong. I'm like, just no. So far, every single information I've seen from Khazgazad is really good. It's really, really good. There is no other channel like Kazgazad I've seen on YouTube. And screw the channel, screw the anything. In, you know, even the something that you read, even something that you hear, nothing will come across something good as Kazgazad. How simplistically explains things. Yeah, lots of biological things I've learned from Kazgazad. I mean, I, you know, I love science, I love anything from physics, astrophysics, and, you know, but I never was the guy who, you know, cared about anything biology field. But I learned so much from Khazgazad, from immune systems, even about ants, how ants war, you know, do wars and shit. So, you know, did he take something from here and there and I guess mold it in a way that could be questionable? Maybe, but did he, uh, did he lie about something? I highly doubt that. So, yeah, I don't know what that video is. I haven't checked it out, but yeah, whatever. But this video was extremely good. His quality is just getting better and better, which is surprising. He was already way too good. So I don't even know where this will go. Every font, every animation here and there is just great. All right, well, uh, if you like my reaction, don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you next time.